I'm gonna start this video off saying, if you guys aren't uh, subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell notification because I am not gonna be uploading every single week. So if you guys don't hit that bell notification, you'll never get notified probably because the way YouTube works, if you're not uploading a video often enough, um, they kind of hide your videos or don't recommend them even to your own subscribers. Um, I've had this problem before in the past. So just make sure you're hitting the bell notification. Make sure you're subscribed. My videos are gonna be kind of sporadic, at least for the summertime here or for the next couple months until I get my work all caught up and whatnot. And just know that my videos may not come out on the same day each week like I used to post on a Sunday. Now you may see my videos post like on a Thursday night or a Monday night. They just hit that bell notification. Make sure you guys are up to date on my channel if you like the content I'm producing. So today we're gonna be doing the hydrostatic transmission change on this tractor. It is currently at a thousand hours and the last time I changed the fluid was at the 400 hour service. If you guys are following the Kubota maintenance regiment, you'll know that you should be changing the hydrostatic transmission fluid filter and clean the strainer every 400 hours. So 600 hours since I've done it last, I am 200 hours overdue. Um, which is not good because I actually planned to change this when I originally did it at like the 600 hour mark because I wanted to actually change it early knowing how hard I worked this machine. Uh, it's never a bad thing to change it early. And instead of changing it early, I ended up changing it late. So um, you know how that works with life. Life gets ahead of you. You got a lot of work to do and uh, work always comes first in my book before anything else. So um, that is why we're behind on the maintenance, which isn't good. I'm really uh, kind of worried to see the metal strainer inside the transmission. Um, really scared to look at that because that might not look too good. But we're gonna be cleaning that and taking a look at that today, changing the hydro filter and the fluid. Now, one thing I wanna say to the guys that like to just swap a filter on, um, that is fine if your tractor hasn't done a lot of work or you don't have a ton of hours on it to just swap the filter and keep the fluid in there. But one thing you guys gotta remember is if you're adding a lot of hydraulic attachments, because these tractors use the same fluid for the hydrostatic transmission as they do on the uh, rest of the hydraulics of the tractor, anytime you add a new grapple with new cylinders or a new hydraulic angle plow, or say you're adding uh, a third function valve, or like me, you added this uh, artillion splitter valve, each time you open up the hydraulics like that and go into the system you're introducing dirt debris anything that could have been inside this manifold is now inside my system um, even though it was new it does have contaminants in it every time you put hydraulic thread paste on those fittings a little bit will probably get into the oil and just using different cylinders from different machines different grapples they all have a different fluid in them so your fluid over time gets very contaminated now on my machine i also added the hydraulic rear remotes um, this included me ripping pretty much into the whole hydraulics on the back end of the transmission here. Um, you plumb in all these new lines and stuff. A lot of new fittings, a lot of new plumbing, and obviously these four couplers. So this could also introduce a ton of debris and contaminate your oil. So you just gotta be aware of that. Something great to think about because everything you add will contaminate your system. That being said, I've added a ton of stuff to mine. Um, lots of hydraulic attachments. I even built my own attachments at one point for it that had a cylinder from like an old New Holland, which who knows what kind of oil that thing had in it. I know my fluid for sure is very contaminated, especially over all the years and all the insane abuse I put this tractor through. I've had it on summer days and I've worked this thing. You couldn't even touch the hydraulic cylinders, pulling stumps out and whatnot in the summertime in the dead heat. Um, you're working them a long time, you're working them hard. I've had them so you can't even touch the cylinders. They're just burning hot. I've also worked the transmission so hard that I could smell the transmission fluid burning. Like years ago when I moved the shed up here, I used my Kubota BX to push the shed as my buddy pulled it with a rope. I had it in low gear, full RPM, and I could actually smell the transmission oil burning. I could smell it was hot. So I've had this fluid just below its boiling point many occasions and each time you do that and add all that heat into the system uh, it just slowly breaks down your oil over time so basically what i'm trying to get at is this thing is extremely extremely due for this oil change and it should have been done many many hours ago I'm kind of upset i didn't do it sooner so i'm going to show you guys step by step how to do this it's not very hard but i want to show you guys some things that nobody else really does things that you can do to protect your transmission after you're doing an oil change so why don't we go ahead and get into this and we'll get started all right so the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead and fire the tractor up and we're gonna do this so that we can warm the engine, which will then warm the hydraulics because anytime the engine is running, the hydraulic pump is turning. So I'm gonna let this thing idle a little bit, maybe work the hydraulics back and forth just to get the oil lukewarm. Um, you want it about lukewarm at best. You don't wanna burn yourself, but you do want it warm so that the oil comes out easier and so that it can kind of flush out all the dirt and debris that's in it with it. Okay hey guys, so I just got done warming up the hydraulic fluid. Transmission is warm to the touch. One thing to notice here, as you can see, I have all my hydraulic rams all the way collapsed. My loader boom rams, they are all the way in. Got my curl cylinder all the way in, and I've got my three-point hitch back here all the way down. 
You do this because you want all the fluid possible out of your cylinders and into the reservoir in the transmission. This way you can get rid of all that dirty oil. If you have everything fully extended and your loader out and your, you know, your curl cylinder all the way dumped, um, you're not gonna get all that fluid out. So I wanna try to get as much of this dirty old fluid out as I can so I've got everything collapsed. Okay, at this point you're gonna wanna get the jack, slide it up underneath the rear here and lift it up just ever so slightly just to give yourself enough room to work under there and to be able to get your pan underneath the transmission oil drain. So now let's go ahead and jump under there. You're gonna need a three inch drive ratchet or a half inch on a 27 millimeter socket. Now these transmissions hold about three gallons all together, which I think is about 12 quarts. And here you can see I've got 16 quarts of capacity in this oil drain pan. So just make sure you're using a pan that's large enough. Now you can see I got just enough room here slide my pan up underneath the transmission. The drain plug we're taking off is located right here. We'll go ahead and crack that loose. It's pretty much the only large plug in the bottom of the transmission. Now I've got the dipstick and the filler cap still in because I don't want this fluid to wash out. So if you don't want to have a mess, I would advise leaving your filler cap still installed. Otherwise your fluid is going to pour out of here so fast Hey, you're not going to be able to keep up with it. So now we're down to just a drip. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the drain plug. As you can see, I've cleaned it off. I made sure the gasket is in good shape. I'll go ahead and reinstall this. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start on the hydraulic filter here. Go ahead and slide the pan back. Oh man, that fluid looks nasty coming out of there. Seeing it right here and it looks almost black. <laughs> I'm sure this filter is just completely plugged up. Maybe three, three and a half, something like that. Yeah, you can just see, if you look at the oil right here, you can see how black it is. It's not too often you see black hydraulic fluid. <laughs> Make sure your gasket is on your filter because if it sticks to this flange here, um, you're not going to be very happy when you spin your new filter on. And as soon as you start, it's going to leak all over the place. So always make sure your rubber gasket is on the old filter. So now I'm just going to take a rag and just make sure my flange here is nice and clean. Make sure we got no dirt on this. And now the transmission fluid filter we're using is HHK20-36990. as a Kubota filter. And I wouldn't recommend using anything else but a Kubota filter and Kubota oil for your hydraulic oil change. Okay, we got the new filter here. I'm gonna go ahead and dab a little bit of clean hydraulic fluid on it. Spin it on carefully, making sure not to bump it against any dirt that may be underneath your uh, transmission here, underneath your frame. That's why it's always a good rule to pressure wash or clean your tractor before you service it. Um, I always do. I always try to wash my machine really, really good before I service it. Um, not only so that you got a clean machine to work on when you're servicing it, but also so that the frame and all of your, your main um, points on the frame are clean. So if you see any issues with like your linkages or any cracks in the frame or just any kind of problem like that, you could actually see it because if everything's coated in dirt and mud, um, you're not gonna be able to be aware of issues that may be coming up. Um, that's why it's kind of funny when some people just never wash their tractor and they say, well, it's a tractor. Well, if you wanna take good care of your tractor and you care about you know its health, then you'll wash it from time to time because that's the only way you're gonna see if there's a problem starting to occur. Okay, get that good and snug. I always get it tight and do like another half a rotation. I'm gonna get a wrench on this and just clock it a little bit more. You want these pretty tight because they're underneath the transmission and they do have a lot of vibration down here which can loosen them up. So get them decently snug and you'll be all set. So now what we're gonna do is move to the back side of the tractor and we're gonna remove the transmission strainer, which is a metal strainer, and um, that's what collects all the dirt and debris before it gets to your pump. So we're gonna pop that out, take a look at it, and then we'll clean it. And I'm a little bit worried on what we might find. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get our jack out of the way since, it's, since that's no longer needed. All right, guys, so now we're gonna remove the filter strainer. I've got a different drain pan here. It's a little bit easier to slide under here just to give me some space. And you're gonna need a 12 millimeter socket on a 3 8 ratchet or quarter inch. All right, now we got that loose. Go ahead and remove this bolt. And then we can remove 
the tab that holds the plug in, just like that. Okay, then as you'll notice, there is a slight indentation all the way around this plug, so you can get a screwdriver in here and pop the plug out. And I've decided to use this little pry bar here to give myself a little bit more leverage. Okay, so right there we got it to move. Just basically using the pry bar up against the frame here. And we've got it loose there. So now we can go ahead and pull it out and see just how bad this thing looks. All right, guys, so I've got the screener up here on the bench, and this is what it looks like. This is what being 200 hours over on your service looks like um, and working your machine extremely hard, oftentimes using it over its capacity, having your hydraulic pressure increased, and just working the tractor to death. This actually isn't too bad. I was actually expecting it to be a lot worse, to be honest with you. There's definitely a lot of crud towards the base of this. Um, now, if this is the first time you're pulling your screener out, it may look just as bad as mine, um, if not a little bit worse, um, but that is because your tractor is still going through a break-in process, so you will have a lot of metal debris on your screener, as well as a lot of RTV-type gunk from when they sealed up the transmission case when they built it. So don't be alarmed if yours looks as bad, if not worse, than mine on your first oil change. But now on the second time you do your oil change and you pull your strainer out, this should not look too bad. I would assume most tractors look about what this one side looks like. That would be like the total amount on there after their next oil change where mine looks more like it did on the first oil change so um you know typically they clean up quite a bit after the first one mine i believe is only this bad because of all the hydraulic attachments i've added all the times i've been into the plumbing of my hydraulics upgrading things modifying things that on top of it being overdue and like i said being worked very hard so all in all i'm not too upset about this it looks pretty decent um i was really expecting this entire thing just to be fully clogged so i'm really happy it wasn't um because that means i wasn't starving the pump too bad um, which is good because if this thing gets totally clogged up, you will start to starve your hydraulic pump of fluid and then you're gonna burn your pump out. That's why it's very important to keep this clean because this is your main primary defense from the fluid coming back to your pump. So if this gets clogged up, basically, um, your pump doesn't get oil. So anyway, I've got some carbon choke cleaner here. Um, you could use any type of thing, brake clean, any kind of cleaner you wanna use and spray this thing off. You wanna make sure you spray it off and not spray it towards the inside. So you wanna spray towards the edges and kind of blow off the debris. And then as we clean it, we will use a blow gun, which I've got over there, and we'll blow this thing nice and dry and make sure we've got every bit of contaminants off of the screen. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna have to actually rub some of this off because it's, it's definitely embedded in there. Oh yeah, it's definitely embedded. All right, so now I've got it pretty clean and um, soaked with some carbon choke cleaner. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my spray gun now and start blowing this out. And the last thing you want to do here once you feel you've gotten this pretty clean is take your air gun and blow from the inside out just to make sure there's nothing left inside of it. It's kind of hard to get in there, but... All right, guys, all said and done, this is what you should look like. Now you can see I've got it totally clean. You want to make sure that you get all the debris out. Make sure there's nothing on the inside here that you blew from the outside to the inside. You want to make sure that's extremely clean and that you see no particles whatsoever. Because remember, once we stick this back in, we're not going to be pulling it out again for another 400 hours. Um, and in my case, it may be just a little bit more than that. So let's go ahead and stick this back in the transmission so we can get this thing filled up with oil. All right, guys, now before we put this back in, you want to make sure that hole is very clean. You don't want any kind of metal that may have fallen off the screener when you pulled it out sitting in this race here, because if there is, it could tear the O-ring, and you're just going to push contaminants back in when you put the screener back in. So I'm going to delicately clean out this hole here, making sure we didn't leave anything behind. Here's some of the dirt that I just pulled out of there, so you can see how dirty that rag is now. There's definitely some leftover residue sitting inside of that uh, hole right there. So now we go ahead and throw the screener back in. Now remember when you put it in, you're gonna wanna have this tab facing upwards, so the opening facing up. 
so we can put the bracket back in place that holds it in. Now it doesn't hurt to throw a little lube around this o-ring. Mine's already got lube on it. Make sure that's nice and oiled. That way you don't hurt it going in. Now all you gotta do is give it a nice little bump to get it popped back in place. I'm gonna use the end of my pry bar here to give it a smack. Okay, now we got it back in. Now you could just put the bolt in there and let the bolt pull it in, but I'd rather do it quickly instead of having the bolt draw it in so slowly where I can tear something. Um, normally it's better to go faster than slower. Go ahead and reinstall our bolt here with our tab. Make sure our tab is gonna line up. You might have to clock that a little bit, just like that. Want to make sure you get that bolt nice and snug because if that comes out and your plug falls out you're going to lose all of your transmission fluid all of your hydraulic fluid and you're going to burn your pump up so you definitely don't want that happening so now we can go ahead and start filling this transmission with fluid all right guys so now we're going to go ahead and start filling this transmission up as you'll see here i took off my back uh, suitcase weights and remove the one pin from my hydraulic top link just so I can tilt my quick hitch in my weight bracket back. Um, that will allow me to fully access this without having to um, try to pour around my weight bracket and my uh, quick hitch here. So now I'm totally accessible here. I can get right to the dipstick, no problem. Uh, it only took me a minute to do it. And as far as the oil goes, the spec in the book is 3.1 gallons, and I believe that's completely dry because I went to the Kubota dealer, they told me um, just buying the two and a half gallon and one quart would suffice. I didn't believe that that seemed a little bit low to me so i bought an extra quart so i got two quarts and the two and a half gallon jug so we're going to pour this entire two and a half gallon jug in there and then we're going to pour a quart in there and start it up and check it and see where we're at uh, i believe i'm going to have to use all of this and i still may be just a touch low um, but that 3.1 gallon um, on the specs there, I believe that is with it bone dry, um, you know, not an ounce of fluid in the transmission at all. And as you know, we're going to have a little bit of residual fluid left in things. So hopefully this will be enough. Let's go ahead and fill this up. You can see I got a nice skinny funnel here. Go ahead and throw that in there and we'll start with this two and a half gallon. Now on a Kubota BX, your dipstick port is your fill port. Just kind of nice because you don't have two separate areas to worry about. So go ahead and pull this dipstick out here. Funnel installed here. Be sure when you open up a new jug of oil that you get all this foil out of here. Um, I usually try to puncture it from the side, nice and easy, and I pull the foil out. That way nothing can get pushed in there. Just be very careful you don't drop any of the pieces in there as they can wreak havoc on your system. All right, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add both these extra quarts that I have, um, just because I think, I still think it's gonna be a little bit low, so I'm not even gonna worry about checking it. I'm just gonna dump all these in, and we'll check them at the end. I can't really see myself being too high. Okay. So that should be exactly three gallons, so we'll see where we're at here. All right guys, now we've got it filled up with oil. These next few steps I'm gonna tell you guys about are the utmost important steps on this whole oil change. Because if you screw this part up, you can really damage your transmission. The swash plate inside of there, which actually is what's in charge of moving the uh, hydraulic flow forward and backwards to move your axle. Also, it can damage your hydraulic pump if you don't do this right. So, because we had no oil in there and we just added a bunch of fresh oil, we're gonna have a lot of air pockets and a lot of air bubbles that need to work themselves out. So what we're gonna do here is actually pop this dipstick out just a little bit. Leave it in there, but don't leave it sealed. That way the air can escape. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the engine up. We're gonna bring it to about half throttle. We're gonna let it sit there for a little bit. Make sure your hydrostatic transmission is in neutral. I put it in neutral so that nothing could be you know, damaged if you hit the hydrostatic pedal. It's not gonna hurt anything or put any load on the transmission because the last thing you wanna do after a fresh oil change in the transmission is work the transmission pedal forward or backwards when it doesn't have any oil on the swash plate because that will scar up the swash plate, you will lose pressure and you will eventually it'll just damage your transmission and you won't have the speed that you once had out of it. Um, so we're gonna start it up, half revs, make sure it's in neutral. Once we let it run at half idle for a little while, give it like a couple of minutes. Um, that way you can make sure that pump is flowing good. At half the RPMs, the pump will be flowing nicely and that'll work the air out alone. And then after a couple of minutes, what we're gonna do here is as it's in neutral, we're just gonna work this pedal back and forth real slowly. Go forward a little bit, hold it. Go backwards a little bit, hold it. And this will kind of get everything going inside the transmission, start bleeding the air out. And then once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and jack up the rear tires and we're gonna run it in gear 
We'll do low range first, because that's the least amount of load. So we'll pop it in low range, and then we're gonna do high range. And as the rear tires are up in the air, they won't be putting any load on the transmission, and we're basically gonna work it back and forth the same way, both in low gear and then in high gear. And then once you've done that a significant amount of times, back and forth, back and forth, maybe 10 times per um, pedal. Once you've done that, you should have worked out all the air, and now it'll be safe to check the transmission fluid and drive and use the tractor. So that is the procedure I do. Uh, not everybody does it, but it's extremely important. In my opinion, it's one of the most important things. Do not put a load on a transmission until you've worked the air out of it. So we're gonna go ahead and start it up, bring it to half idle, and you'll just watch what I do because you probably won't be able to hear me. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna shut the tractor down like I just did. We're gonna take the jack and jack up the rear end again. And we're gonna get the back tires so they're completely in the air. We're gonna jump back in the seat here, start it up, bring it back to about uh, 2,500 or so RPM. We're gonna put the transmission from neutral to low range. Then we're gonna work the pedal back and forth about 10 times. Once we've done that, we'll go to high range, do it again about 10 times, shut the engine off, set the tractor down, we'll check the fluid, and once your fluid is all set, then you're all good to go, and you can go ahead and drive your tractor and work it as normal. Okay, here we go. Make sure that you're not four wheel drive and uh, locking your front wheels up or chalking them wouldn't be a bad idea either. So we're gonna go ahead and start it up. We're gonna start in low gear and do the same thing, same process in low and high and we should be all set. Also, when you check your transmission fluid, always make sure your hydraulic cylinders are in the same location each time. Otherwise, you're going to get a different mark on your dipstick. You know, like I said in the beginning, if your hydraulic rams are pulled out um, the first time you check it, and then you check it again when they're pushed in, um, that's going to make your oil level change. So make sure that it's always, you know, at the same spot. Like whenever I check my fluid, I always bring my cylinders in and bring my loader all the way down, three-point hitch down. I check it the same way every time, so I know I got an accurate reading. We're actually just perfect. If you look here, it's a touch low. It's about right here on a dipstick, but it is in the cross hatches, which is fine. You can see it's right up to about here on the backside. So we're pretty much good. I might add another half a quart at some point, but we're definitely in good shape. Um, before this, I actually didn't even have any oil on a dipstick. <laughs> so I don't know how low it was before, but I didn't want to add any oil because that's all I had. And I wanted to wait until I did this video um, I found out it didn't have any oil in the dipstick about two weeks ago, so I haven't been using it much until we did this oil change. Now with this done, I can go ahead and really start using my tractor again. All right, guys, we've got the tractor officially back together, and man, am I so glad that that transmission change is finally done. I don't know why I waited so long. I mean, I kind of do because I've just been so freaking busy. You know, building this pole barn really put me behind in life, put me behind on side work and everything else. Um, but man, I am so glad that's done because I regret it every time I had to use this machine on it was so overdue. On top of that, I've been having some issues with this uh, tractor that I, I want to point out in case anybody else is having these issues because I'm hoping that this transmission change will clear them up 
because they are common symptoms of having clogged filters and whatnot. So the first issue I was having was that my reverse pedal seems to be um, a little bit slow going in reverse. It just seems to, when I hit the pedal, it just didn't seem to have enough power in reverse, which told me that something could have been getting, you know, clogged up the filter. Also going forward, it just didn't seem to have the uh, the same amount of power without the whine. The whining seemed to get louder and louder over time. And it just seemed to have not as smooth of a feel with the hydrostatic pedal. You know, it just seemed kind of crunchy. I mean, really crunchy at times. Um, other times I had issues with the pedal where it felt like it was sticking, like it was getting hung up on something inside the transmission, like on that swash plate that moves when you move the pedal. Uh, sometimes it would be very firm to push the pedal down. And then after about three times, it would get really easy. And this is all while operating the tractor, which would throw me all off on the middle of a job or in the middle of a video. Another issue I was having was with the loader valve. I used to be very, very smooth on this loader valve as most people know that watch my channel. I'm very in tune with this loader valve and I can tell very little changes that happen to it. And over last summer, I noticed that this loader valve was not nearly in tune like it used to be. Um, certain points it would stick and not do what I wanted to. It was getting very hard to find those sweet spots at certain times, uh, especially at certain temperatures, which again led me back to the hydraulic oil and the filters possibly getting clogged because as oil thins out, it's gonna, it's gonna act a bit differently than when it's thicker. Also, when I would max the loader out, say I was booming up, and I maxed it out, the loader valve would actually stick. So if I maxed out the loader going down and I released it, the loader valve would get sticky and it would slowly go back up and it would basically be uh, hitting off the relief valve the whole time. Instead of it just bouncing right back, it was like sticking. So, but that would only happen when I maxed my loader out. So there's actually quite a few things that I noticed that were happening um, kind of in slow time um, over the period of last summer and a little bit into the last winter. Um, and that, that really led me to know that I had to change this oil fast and unfortunately I didn't. Um, went through a whole nother winter with it the way it was, but we've got to change now. So I'll keep you guys posted. Um, I believe it's going to fix all those issues, resolve all of them. The slow reverse may be in my linkages, but last time I checked, all my linkages were tight and I didn't have a loose bolt on the one linkage going back, which is a common problem on these. But if I find anything with that, I will let you guys know. Um, otherwise, I'll keep you guys updated with all my issues that I was having and if it went away. I really truly believe it's gonna because that hydraulic filter that is sitting over there on a the bench back in the box, I looked in it and all the pleats looked really like they're almost black. I mean, that thing was definitely clogged up. And in another video, we're gonna go ahead and cut that filter open so we can see what it looks like in there. Um, I'd really like to see, you know, a 600 hour oil filter that was really abused and worked hard. I'd like to see exactly what it looks like. Um, that'll give me a lot of insight on what was going on with this and if I was losing flow and pressure like I think it was. So with that all being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative for you guys that are changing your transmission fluid this, uh, this spring. Go ahead and change your fluid now. Follow the steps that I took and it should help a lot of people out. Uh, I tend to cover a lot of things on my channel that other people don't or that people miss or skip over. Um, I try to show every single detail on my channel. So if you like this video, definitely like it. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that bell notification because my videos are probably gonna be all over the place in the next coming couple months here until I get caught up. As you see in my shop here, I've got a couple new pieces of uh, equipment in here. This is uh, my buddy's four wheeler that I gotta fix. And this is a uh, an old, T1400 Kubota HST lawnmower that I've been rebuilding and I'm just about done with it so I can sell it. I got a bagger for it and everything. Pretty nice little machine. And then I also got to continue on this forklift and I got some side jobs coming up as well with the tractor. I've got to do a driveway job at um, Sean's house where I've, we've done a lot of work on the channel. Um, so hopefully we can visit that together. Um, so yeah, I just got a lot of work to catch up on. I've got a couple more tractors I got to do. My brother's tractor and my father's friend's tractor. I got to do the maintenance on those tractors. Not sure if I'm going to record it and put it on the video or not because I just really got to work my butt off and get this stuff done and that way I can get caught up so we can do more videos again without me feeling like I'm behind. So anyway, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.